Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know that not all of the original founding masters came from Okinawa, or even from Japan? I'm talking about Mr. Masutatsu Mas Oyama, and he was the founder of the Kyokushin line of karate. He was born in Gimje, a city in what is now South Korea, in 1923. He spent most of his life in Japan and took on the Japanese nationality in the 60s. He started training martial arts when he was just a young child, training both in Chinese and Korean forms of Kempo. As a young kid, he dreamed of becoming the first Korean fighter pilot in the Japanese army. When he moved to Japan, however, in 1938, the 15-year-old Korean boy found it very difficult to live in this new and strange country. He was forced to forget about this dream to focus on his day-to-day -day survival. He continued his martial arts training by practicing judo and boxing and soon discovered Funakoshi and his school of karate, so he joined them in training in the Shotokan. After the Second World War was over, there were very few jobs available in Japan, making life again very hard for Oyama. This is where he met a fellow Korean martial artist, Sol Nei Chu, who was a high-ranking Korean Goju Ryu Karate master. He convinced Oyama to dedicate his life to martial arts and to isolate himself for three years in the mountains to train his mind and body. Inspired by the words of Sonaichu and also by the writings about legendary swordsman Musashi Miyamoto, he decided to travel to the mountain Minobu with one of his students, a young boy by the name of Yashiro. A friend of his, Kayama, would be his sponsor and would provide him with supplies during his seclusion. The solitude proved to be too great a challenge for a student though, and one night after only six months, Yashiro fled, leaving Oyama to train alone. This put Oyama's resolve to the test, so he wrote to his master Sonechu about the situation. Master Cho wrote back, telling him to shave off one of his eyebrows to make sure he would not return to civilization. Oyama would not want to be seen with one of his eyebrows which missing. This way, he could continue his training to become the strongest karateka of Japan. After 14 months, however, Kayama let Oyama know he could no longer provide him with his needed supplies. So the martial artist was forced to cut his seclusion short. When he returned to civilization, Oyama managed to win the first national martial arts competition to be held in Japan after a war. He still had the urge though to finish his three years seclusion in the mountains. So not too long after, he resumed his training, this time on the mountain Kyozumi. His training during the second period of isolation was extremely fanatic. It is said that he had trained every day for 12 hours, performing kata underneath waterfalls, uh, broke river stones with his bare hands and used trees as makiwara. He also spent a considerable amount of time studying ancient martial arts, Zen and philosophy. After 18 months, his time on the mountain came to an end and he returned full of confidence. He was determined to never let his struggles from the past return. In the 1950s, he started what could be considered a worldwide marketing campaign for his martial arts school. He had video footage filmed of him killing bulls by using shuto. He also traveled to the Americas to demonstrate and promote his karate on live television. Now, two of possibly the best known Kyokushin karate practitioners are the late Sean Connery, who held an honorary first dan, and Dolph Lundgren, who was recently awarded 4th Dan. 
Much is written about the nay inhuman feats of strength of Mazoyama, about him defeating hundreds of opponents with one punch, uh, breaking arms and ribs in the process, about him killing bulls with a single blow. But an interview with John Blooming, one of his most important students and one of the most prolific Dutch martial artists, seems to refute this. Let's take a look at what he had to say about it. It's ridiculous because you, you, you can find out easily that it is not possible even what they say. Now think about it. Until 1975, 76, when the last time I met him in 76, he has not killed any bulls because he hasn't fought any bulls. He has never even seen a bull. He fought in 1952, not a bull, an ox, but that's different. Then Oyama comes and he hits this poor ox. You see the picture? You see the eye of the ox? It's pure fear for what the f*** is going on. And then Kurosaki told me some years ago, and I have three witnesses there, Chris Dolman is one witness, and Maeda from Japan is a witness. Kurosaki went to Tateyama city, to that ox, with a hammer, and he hit the horn. So when Oyama came, hey, boom, yeah, of course. It was loose already. And he never killed them. He never killed dogs. They killed it in the abattoir, in the slaughterhouse. Why all those lies? So he asked Oyama, and he said, ah, all uh, monkey business, all public relations. So, okay. He said, we had to start Kyokushinkai, so we tried to make it famous like that. I prefer to be as correct as I can here. So I'll let you decide what you choose to believe about this. You can find this interview by following this link here. Oyama opened his first dojo in 1953 when he was 30 years old. In his schools, kumite was considered most important. Both percussive attacks and grappling techniques were taught, expanding his karate wherever possible to make the system as complete as possible. He called his style Kyokushin to mean the ultimate truth in 1964. Masoyama died in 1994 of lung cancer and his style of karate continues to this day to be one of the most practiced karate styles in the world. In competition, it's a style of full contact karate. Now, next week, we'll take a look at the founder of Wechiryu, Uwechi Kanbo. Did you guys know about Masoyama and his unique life? Would you ever consider to spend a few years in absolute isolation to hone your karate skills? Leave a comment down below, I'm curious. Now don't forget to like, share and of course subscribe. For now, have a great day and as always, thanks for watching.